Hi everybody, welcome to the second in our Lighthouse sessions. Um, so as the uh, welcome screen said, uh, we are recording, um, so do let us know if you have any problems with that. Um, one of the things I discussed also with Jean is that um, this is not a webinar, um, so we can see you and we want to see you and um, we're going to hopefully give you questions and it's great for Jean to be able to see as many people as possible as well if you feel comfortable with that so do flip your video on as much as you can bear unless you're in your pyjamas even if you're in your pyjamas which given that I don't know it's like 10 o'clock at night in Singapore right now Jean would have the right to be in his pyjamas and we're very very lucky so as I explained last week, we're kind of experimenting with this uh, Lighthouse Sessions format and really the idea was to bring you, you know, exciting, interesting people that I've been lucky enough to meet and bring some different perspectives um, uh, from around the library world and outside the library world. And um, when I was looking for speakers uh, or participants this year, it was Eric Bukestein, who said you must talk to Jean. He's amazing, what he's doing is amazing, and um, we had a fantastic uh, encounter a few weeks ago, didn't we, Jean? Um, just, I think we could have talked for like 500 hours. Um, so I feel it's a bit unfair to ask Jean to talk about what he's doing in such a short amount of time. Um, but we're going to give it a go. Uh, we've scheduled this session again like last week. We can run over the hour if we need to. We'll definitely stop by late as 5.30. Um, if we want to stop before we can, um, or if Jean falls asleep because it's so late and hot. <laughs> um, and um, again, just um, feel free, put thoughts and chats in the question as, as you go along, as Jean's making his presentation. Um, and then if you guys um, want to throw in stuff um, afterwards, I'm going to do a mixture of taking questions from the chat and um, giving the floor to some people who've maybe, if you've put something interesting in the chat and I want to hear you, great. If you're comfortable with that, fantastic. Um, if not, then just send me desperate private messages on the chat and I won't put you on the spot. Um, great to see so many people here. Um, and so with that, um, I'm going to hand over to Jean. Um, your official title is Assistant Chief Executive to the National Library Board of Singapore. That's quite confusing for me in terms of what you might actually do, so you could maybe explain that to everybody. Um, you've come back into the library world after a fascinating five years away. Um, which I suspect we could probably all do with at some point in our library lives. And you're embarking on a fascinating journey of experimentation and risk-taking. And again, you know, it's going to be a miracle if we can even figure out 5% of what you're doing at the moment because it's so exciting. So I'm going to hand over to you, Jean, um, and um, I'll look forward to the conversation. Over to you. Hi everyone. Uh, hi, I'm Jean. Uh, I'm wearing a cap because I've actually washed my hair and uh, I'm sort of in jammies because uh, I'm planning to go to bed at 11.30, which is 5.30 for Ilona. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. So as an assistant chief executive, I assist the chief executive and my key role is to chart the vision for the National Library Board of Singapore, which manages the National Library uh, the system of public libraries, as well as the national archives. So we are quite a weird animal. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to share some, uh, some thoughts with you about my journey away and then coming back to the library. Uh, before I left the library world, I was in the National Library and uh, I had also done the rounds in IFLA and all that. So it was a, it was a big decision to leave the library because at that point, I didn't think I could go any further in the library. I, I hit I hit the sort of bottleneck. I didn't know what I could do with libraries anymore. Yeah. So I started something called the Singapore Memory Project. That was my last project at the National Library Board, and then I left. Uh, so I'm going to share with you some of the um, thoughts that I have now. I'm going to say upfront 
that everything that I'm sharing today has been created since I came back to, uh, to the library world. Uh, so none of them, none of them have been implemented yet. They are all at the experimental stage. Uh, so I would just say that I would be very happy if one of you uh, can go ahead and develop it faster than I can, and then to unleash it onto the library world. Yeah, that would be a gift to me. Yeah, because Ilona and the library world, we share. Yeah, so I'm sharing ideas with you. Some of them are at the, I would say not even at the beta stage. They are right at the start of uh, something I call the sandbox. Okay, so I'm gonna share some thoughts with you. So I'm gonna share my screen now. And then, uh, so Ilona will talk for about maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah, I'll just keep going. Until you just you keep going. Started. And I'm, what I might do is interrupt you. Oh, good. I like that. Yeah. 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 If you say good. something like that really, really blows my mind, I'm just going to go, whoa, 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 whoa. I just like explain more here. Oh, come on. Right? Nothing I say can blow your mind like the BGs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that just stole the thunder. Okay, you so I'm going to share my screen now and then I hope it works. Okay, I'm going to try Keynote first. If it yeah. doesn't work, then I'll switch to PDF. Perfect. Yay. Does it work well, guys? Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to go. Okay, so a while ago, I was watching a fashion show. Okay, and um, this was the Gucci fashion show. It was several, I think it was several months ago. It was several weeks ago. Uh, so Gucci did a show that was very shocking. So when the people came down the Gucci runway, um, the shapes were very un gucci s. They actually looked like Balenciaga, which is by another designer, which is on the left. Uh, so that's Daniel Vasalia, and that's uh, Alessandro Michele, who's the designer of Gucci, the long hair. And I thought, this is just so amazing. This is unprecedented for a major house, not to copy bits of what somebody's doing, but to invite almost like the house coats of another fashion house and to build another system. And then I started thinking, what about the library house coats? How do we hack the library? What are all the things that we can do to undermine, but also to renew uh, the library codes. Interesting. Okay, so these are three library codes that I think are quite, quite common. Uh, so libraries as a common space where diversity, community, uh, you're rich, you're poor, you're well-known, you're not, uh, whatever, whatever race you're in, it is a welcoming space. Library is also for first encounters because a lot of people remember as the first place where they encounter a lot of ideas uh, as a kid. But is it also a place where you encounter ideas for the first time as an adult? And third, very simple, libraries expand learning. So common encounters with learning. That is uh, for, for generations, the library code. Uh, so going away, I started to think, what about the new codes? Uh, so I was looking a little bit like Silicon Valley uh, because I'm jealous of what they're doing. And I'm also um, thinking that they are such evil people sometimes, uh, and yet they are able to reap so much benefit. So I thought of using some of the Sil Silicon Valley code. So whether it's Uber or something else, it's always about a platform service. So what if I rethink the library code as a platform service? Uh, and then there's the social network, of course, there are many different kinds, and I thought, Okay, social network, digital social network. What if the library invites that code and becomes a digital social network? And finally, the third one, I'm just gonna keep it for now and I'll share that with you later. Uh, but it's the idea of the theater. I mean, um, theaters have gone dark for many months now, sometimes I think more than a year. How can we invite that spirit of vitality and, and creativity of theater into the library? Okay, so I started with four books. So this year, the National Library Board, I have launched a year of experimentation. So in the library world in Singapore, when we launch a master plan, and we had several, we'll consult seven, 8,000 people. And then uh, we'll put that all in the really thick master plan. We'll release it and call it, this is the library of the future. So this year, we said, screw all of that. Uh, we're going to experiment. So we took several ideas and then we started to sandbox them and we're going to release about 60 experiments over the course of one year and just test them in the community to see that, whether that works. And the journey, because I'm a librarian, started with books. So I'm going to take you through four books and then go through each inspiration. So the first book was um, Neil Ferguson. It's called The Square and the Tower. It's actually about hierarchies and about networks. Um, it is an extremely difficult book to read. In fact, I thought uh, 
the writer actually wrote it as a joke because the first half was almost <laughs> impossible to read. Uh, but it's very good for me to read at bedtime. But as I got to like half of the book, uh, I realized that there was something there. So he was thinking of breaking down hierarchies into the square, which is networks. And uh, the whole book is actually about network theory. It's about hubs, multiple hubs, but also the relationships between hubs and the traffic that goes through hubs. And then the nodes that connect in between the hubs into a network. So I thought, um, in the library world, we are bound by, say, a digital library and maybe a few library buildings, and that's about it. So what if you can think of the library world as this network that pulses through everywhere that you can see? Uh, so there are a few projects that I'm working on. So one of them uh, is um, thinking through uh, what we call nano nodes. So we're implanting nano nodes in every part of the island. Uh, it's almost like you think of Singapore as like a layer. Uh, if you think of that as a digital layer and they have nodes that you can connect. So I'm trying to put Singapore content and materials into each of these nodes. So this node could appear on the door in a shopping, in a shopping mall. It could be a note in uh, somebody's website that's extremely popular. Uh, it could be a note in the program book as you open it to watch something in the theater. It could be a note on the Christmas tree in our biggest, uh, our busiest shopping district where every tree is a connection to something in the library. Uh, it's pilfered off a little bit Intel inside uh, the Intel chip, but what if the library is the chip that is in every uh, possible location where people wait, this, uh, they wait for the bus, they wait for the train, or in places where you are just uh, in the park having a great time and you want to pick up something. So you could pick up a Spotify playlist of materials that's related to the libraries, maybe 10 books that's read out to you, or five books that's read out and five books that is... Um, created by artists and, and practitioners of any topic that you're interested in. You pick it up, you borrow it, just like Spotify, you stream it and you run. You're accessing the library without actually visiting the library. But yet at the same time, all of these connect back to the physical library. So I started thinking the idea of hubs, nodes and omnichannel. Okay, so that's the first idea. Okay, the second book, uh, I told you four books, so you guys can count, huh? so I'm not gonna take all night. The Number second two. book is Everything Store. Uh, so I read this and the recent follow-up called uh, Amazon Unbound. So in the everything store, the thing that struck me, which is I think quite well known, is the Amazon flywheel. Okay, so in the Amazon flywheel, uh, what Jeff Bezos attempts to do is to do agglomeration. Uh, so what he does is he tries to accumulate as many third-party sellers to his marketplace as possible. So once you get a lot of third-party market, uh, marketplace sellers, or sometimes you actually buy them off, like jackpress.com, very popular, a very popular and successful company, they bring their customers to the marketplace. So as they bring the customers to the marketplace, more partners or more sellers are attracted. And as more sellers are attracted, they bring even more. Uh, but his end goal is to lower the price because as you get more and more, the fulfillment rate actually lowers. So I thought, what about the library? I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm amazed when I actually look at the digital accesses uh, accesses of people for Singapore library systems, 85 million accesses a year. Uh, and for Singapore, a place of 5 million people, that's a lot. So I thought, okay, with this price pool, this capital of public good and 85 million accesses, can I make the library porous? So can I bring even more partners? So we're talking to different partners now. So they could be government partners. Uh, they could be someone in the theatre who has material, writers, uh, they could even be people who are architects with plans or even uh, politicians, maybe, with some ideas. So all of them have created content of some kind. I'm talking to bookstores, I'm talking to publishers to ask them, uh, your published materials, your manuscripts, your material that, um, that, that comes off your publishing tour, all of these materials, these videos, this audio, text, whatever, you don't have to give it to me, but you can put it in a new learning marketplace that is the National Library Board. And we provide for you the high traffic of 85 million accesses. So the dream, the dream is that one day, uh, the number of items that's on our marketplace that comes from outside the library that's not owned by us, not, not licensed by us, is going to outweigh the amount that the library has. And that truly will be a really powerful marketplace. 
Uh, this is something that Amazon is not interested in, Netflix is not interested in, but it is something that another public good uh, agency will find extremely difficult to disrupt because libraries have built generations, generations of goodwill that translates into a very powerful traffic base. So that's the second idea. Now the third idea, well, Netflix. Uh, so I was reading Netflix and then I started uh, looking at the Netflix research and something I realized is that uh, Netflix has sort of solved the problem or too much. Uh, we have a system in our library. I'm going to say something not very nice. It's called OneSearch, uh, but most of our patrons actually call it no search. The reason is there is so much material and it throws so much back at you. It's like every search, every search results in a fire hydrant and it's impossible to find anything. Then we look at Netflix and say, Netflix has actually created a system where 80% of what people click is based on recommendations, is based on uh, an algorithm that puts something up to you. So we are thinking of using a mixture of algorithms. So there is the machine learning uh, and sometimes they call it neural networks. Uh, based on user history or just based on user behavior. There's also content tagging. So that could be things like your metro tagging could also be linked open data. But then there's also what we curate that we can push out, which is called, um, which you might call it something like Spotify playlist, something that we could pull together and put forward as a playlist of a read list. Uh, so we thought, okay, so we had created that learning marketplace. What if we create a storefront like a learning superstore. And this storefront, so those of you who have been to uh, London, is anyone from London here? Anyway, uh, oh, you don't know in London, yeah. So for instance, it's like Harrods. So in Harrods, you could have many, many different stores and concessions. So there could be a Gucci store, there could be a Louis Vuitton store, but each store has its own flagship elsewhere. So you're telling people I don't have to own you, but you can come to my store and occasionally I'll put you in the spotlight on Netflix. But what I can give you is a dividend, which is your item can now be searchable because it's subjected to the same algorithm. Yeah, so with that, I've actually made a pitch to uh, one of our largest, in fact, the dominant broadcaster in Singapore and say, can you put some of your content in here? So these are like drama, primetime drama and stuff like that. So put that in the library, in the superstore so that it can be found. So if you, for instance, see a TV program on say, I just saw something on BBC, which is uh, Greta, Greta uh, Lundberg's extremely, Thunberg, sorry, extremely exciting I, Greta. Uh, and you could actually bounce a few things off it. From that, you could look at, for instance, a book called Fast Fashion, which is by Dana Thomas, which is about sustainability of fashion. You could bump into Bill Gates and his new book. And there could be very other things that talk about sustainability, greening, and the difficulties that surround that. Yeah, so that enriches, in a sense, the experience of I, Greta. Of book. Okay, so the fourth book is the inside story. Okay, this is the hardest one of all. Uh, we're still figuring out how to do this. We call it the T-shape. Okay, so uh, this is um, inspired after looking at the inside story by Stephen Levy, but also at the documentary Social Dilemma, uh, which actually talks about how uh, social networks actually thrive on driving into narrow and narrow echo chambers. And it, it tries on that to get you to stick. Uh, so at the 10 now, the dream now, which is something the library has always done in the physical world, how do we create T-shaped discovery? How do we create a T-shaped algorithm of sorts? Yeah, how do I make it so that when you come to this learning superstore and you access one material, besides letting it go deeper, we are going to also start to nudge you to other perspectives. So eventually, you start moving towards what we'd like to see, an expanded worldview. Eventually, I hope with enough traffic going through this, maybe this will lessen the whole threat of polarization around the world. So that's the fourth book. Okay, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Okay, so there's another inspiration. This is something that, um, that I thought about when I was outside the library. So remember, I, I had hit a, almost that bottleneck. You know, I had plateau in the library world. Uh, so I spent about five years in the prime minister's office. And in those years, I started to ask questions like, how do I convince government to support my projects? Uh, so I did two projects and these two happened to be multi-million dollar projects and they were national projects supported by 
the prime minister and the full cabinet. Uh, and I realized I needed to do something. I needed to change the format of how I did this. So I'm going to share this final idea with you. And then after Ilona, we'll just pause for questions. So the project that I did was called the Bicentennial Experience. So this marks the 200 years uh, in 2019. It marked the 200 years since uh, Stanford Raffles, which was from, who was from uh, Britain, from the East India Company, actually came to Singapore in 1819. It's a very troubling period because it was the start of colonialism. Uh, but it's also what many people in Singapore think kicked off modern Singapore. Uh, so I had to deal with this subject and they asked me, can you come up with a concept? So one of the flagship items that we did to do this history was called the Bicentennial Experience. Uh, so we took ideas from, um, uh, from theatre, we took ideas from illusion, from technology, we even imported the people who did the London Olympics and the Sochi Winter Olympics who did the sets to do mechatronics. Uh, we had live actors, we had the original score composed. So the idea is, can I create a full body experience to express the content? Uh, so not just to choreograph the content or will some say curate the content, but to let the content actually uh, take a very different form. I just show you some feedback from folks. You don't have to read it all. I can send it over to Ilona. Uh, so some people who, in Singapore, people don't, don't necessarily take to history. Uh, economics is a big thing. Business, livelihood is a big thing. And most people think that our history is really, really short. But what we showed them was our history was generations and centuries before the British actually set foot in Singapore. So we created a larger canvas. So you can see here that a lot of people were very moved by this. Uh, they actually showed, realized that this was... Um, well, they said, not me, that it's the greatest show ever in Singapore. Uh, and then some other people said that it was how it was all put together, the cinematography, visually, auditorily, kinesthetically, because we had live actress that surprised them uh, in a segment that was very reminiscent of Game of Thrones. And finally, and to me, this was the one that's going to kick off the next uh, idea. At the bottom right-hand corner, I don't know if you can see that, uh, you can see that this person, a lot of school kids came. Uh, so they were dragged by their schools to come to this whole experience. But a lot of them said, I actually finally learned something about Singapore history. Because most of the time I would shut off, you know, because it's, it's a lot of text, a lot of material, I would shut it off. So with that, I brought that back to the library and I thought, how can I do this? COVID has hit everybody very hard, even in Singapore where the cases are not as high as some other places. Uh, but in Singapore, nationally, we are beginning to start a series of experimentation. We call it um, the Singapore Together Alliances for Action. So what this is, is government communities organizations are now talking and they're looking at uh, different aspects, social, cultural, economic, all the ways in which you could experiment. Uh, so the topics could go with taking care of the vulnerable to sustainability, to technology. There are a lot of ideas. The problem is, again, remember the fire hydrant? There are a lot of ideas. Uh, so I've actually pitched a project to government. I know this is recorded, but um, this is something that I am happy to say has actually received support, but it's not going out yet to the Singapore public. So don't tell anyone who's Singaporean, not Ilona. Don't tell anyone who's Singaporean. So it's received support and I'm hoping this will come out in 2022 and 2023. So I pitched the idea and this is the idea that I pitched. So the idea is called Pass Forward. So instead of fast forward, it's pass forward. So the, not just springboarding from the past, but to go past what they've experienced and then to look at the way forward. So the centerpiece of this pitch of pass forward that I've, uh, uh, I've presented to uh, the cabinet is can we be a theater of ideas in the library? Uh, so this is one major step for me. Before that is presenting history. Uh, can I use the library as a platform? And I'm going to think of creating this in the library where the ideas from all of those experiments is going to be reimagined as a world. Yeah, so it's a world where you're going to live in and there could be multiple versions of this world based on the ideas. Uh, so with that, people can then actually visualize uh, what are the possible futures after COVID and learning from COVID. Yeah, so one of the things that I had mentioned that is actually Harry Potter and the Cursed World. I saw that in, uh, in New York uh, a couple of years ago. I saw both parts. And I love that uh, they could take J.K. Rowling's material and use the entire surface of theatre using illusion, uh, using light and all that to actually make 
what you read on the page come alive. Now, the second idea, and this is, Ilona, I'm going to stop after this, uh, and it is called Library 2121. So it's the second idea that I pitched to government, and it's about sustainability. And it's not just about um, showing books, but also a multiverse of books. I started with fashion, so I'm going to end with fashion. Uh, I'm going to end with Chanel. Oh, someone just came in. Weird, okay. So I met Lisa, someone just came in in time for Chanel. Okay, so I think this is the Chanel Fall 2014 show. So what Karl Lagerfeld did was that he created a supermarket, except that everything in there is not real. So he had a uh, Ch Chanel uh, chain sauce, you know, with a, with a Chanel chain, and got all kinds of very, very strange products. Uh, and I thought, okay, this is a great idea. Can I incorporate that again? Can I invite the quote of Karl Lagerfeld? Uh, what if we were to create a supermarket that has different sections, but the supermarket itself is like a multiverse, okay, multiverse. So there's this, uh, it's a very, very interesting comic concept. It's in Marvel as well. The idea that there are many different universes. So every aisle that you walk to is a different uh, universe, hence the multiverse, multiverse. Uh, and each aisle will have products that showcases uh, an imagined future. So every product that you pick up actually is a node, a nano node, remember what I talked about earlier, that accesses content in the library, but also content from the community. Uh, so what people are what people are producing, what they're imagining. It could come from kids. It could come from uh, actual entrepreneurs. It could come from uh, policymakers. But together, it constitutes an owl. And that owl showcases what life is like in terms of sustainability. Yeah, but uh, because it is a library, uh, we are also interested. You can see the far left-hand side. We are also interested in books. So every book is a record of uh, a world that's going to come about and it accesses content from different perspectives. Uh, and each book gives you access to that world, uh, whether it's through AR or it's through an access to content that will be in the library in the Learning Superstore. Yeah, and each time um, one of these um, books are moved in Easter egg, because you know, we're very, we're all very um, inspired by movies. Uh, the idea will be visualized. And again, there'll be a video exposition that surprises you and tells you about this. And all this is inside the library. Okay, and then of course, because it is the library and inspired by fashion, one last imbibing of the fashion vibe, which is the idea of changing uh, seasonals and changing coats. Uh, because a lot of this is digital, it will be a lot easier for us to give a different skin to this library superstore or library 2121. So just like Zara, we will change the themes uh, every once in a while, so people will be surprised. Okay, so that's the end of all of these experiments. I'm sorry it's a bit random, but uh, these are ideas that I hope can help us to recode the library. And, uh, and yet at the same time, just maintain the spirit of the library. And I just want to end that Gucci hacked Balenciaga just about a week ago. Balenciaga hacked Gucci bag and came back <laughs> with a whole set of silhouettes of Gucci bags that are actually uh, not Gucci bags. They are Balenciaga bags. They have all the Gucci print and said, this is not Gucci. Yeah, so it's quite amazing. So in a way, we invite all the quotes, but at the same time, we also reject some of the fundamental principles, but I hope taking in from sometimes our enemies can help to reinvent ourselves. Thank you, Ilona. I'm Thank gonna you. Now. Okay, i just trying to think where to start. I'd like to get some questions coming into the chat. That was like a massive download. Thank you so much. <laughs> Very thirsty. Yeah, I've got some lemon water here for you. There you go. It's very hot in Singapore, yeah. Right? I think we're giving you competition here. Um, I mean, I'm just going to, I've got my questions, um, but I, I really would like to have, you know, people, you know, start to think about, you know, what, what's coming up for you guys as well. Um, because I don't think we're seeing anything on this scale or in this way, or just, you know, this is like quite out of the box for me anyway and I'm, I'm curious if you guys feel the same as well you know um there's many things that you said that made me jump you said how to convince government to let me do what i want to do and i think that would be really interesting to develop a little bit um 
there's a lot of things that you're experimenting with that could have a lot of risk involved. Um, I think about the fidgetal ideas. We talked about that quite a lot a few years ago, and I think we're kind of coming round to a question of what the risk is to the physical space when you're investing so much in the digital and how much we want to get people into the building versus not in the building and whether we're whether it's with different kinds of media you know whether we're servicing patrons that we'd rather have in the building than somewhere else and what kind of patrons we're reaching digitally now singapore might have a very particular kind of digital audience compared to other parts of the world that'd be a question for me um, when you're talking about investing in algorithms, I'm thinking about privacy issues, and I'm wondering how you're thinking about that. Now, I'm just, I was just putting on the, what are the risk labels here, and how much are you thinking about that? Whether it's privacy, whether it's, you know, that, that was a kind of whole package of stuff for me. I think we talked about this a little bit before. I come from an arts background, and a lot of this feels very artistically driven to me. So the question for me would be, why are you doing this in the library? Why not do it somewhere else? And why is the library an interesting place to do this? You know, for you, as a creator, um, you know, are you, do you have a particular amount of freedom? What makes it different from a different publicly funded space? Um, I get the kind of hacking idea, but what makes this library versus a, another experimental space? an art space, for example, um, you know, and, um, you know, so I think, you know, maybe that speaks a little bit to what um, uh, Philippe has just said about the citizen involvement, is that a specificity? So I'm going to stop with those. I'm going to go with those three questions just to recap. Risk questions, have you thought about it? Why in the library, second question. And third, was there a real specific thing that you did on the how to convince people? And then I'm going to go um, yeah. into the other questions. Ilona, if you don't mind, maybe I just take one of the questions and then no, I... No, yes, I want you to take all of them. Uh, all right, which one which one's come the favourite question? Ilona, I'll come back to the questions, but I'm conscious that there are other questions. Sure. So I will come back, Ilona. I will go come back, it. but I would like also uh, to address some of the other questions. But I will come back, Ilona. I've written Whatever you want, darling. Whatever yeah, you yeah. Want. So Because I really like to talk to people. I'm alone here and it's at night and you guys are having right? Great time. So I do you want to hear people do you want to hear people's voices? Yeah, so I'll be very upset if I don't hear a question from people because I right? stayed up for this. Otherwise that's really crap. All right. Philippe, yeah, so why I'm, don't you go? Yeah, Say, but maybe uh Ilona, I, I handle one of your questions first because I don't do upset Ilona. Ilona is like the queen of this forum. I'm okay? never up for that. I'm never upset. All right, so you do a call, you do a thing, and then I'm gonna do a couple of I'm gonna throw the floor sure. open. So I'm, I'm gonna do that question and then after that yeah, really. can I have one question from someone else. I think I want to hear your voice. Okay, so the first question, uh, which I think is an extremely important question, is how did we convince government? Mm -hmm. Uh so I was in a session with the top civil servant and the one who's the boss of all the public servants and uh, the person who's issuing out money. So she's the head of finance. And these people are actually more powerful than the ministers because they make the actual decisions. Uh, so my pitch, my elevator pitch, uh, when I found the opportunity was uh, to tell them to think of the library as a whole, not just a whole or government platform, which is something that the government is very aware of, but it's a whole of nation platform. And it's a place where the whole of government meets the whole of nation. So I said, with our excesses and with our image as a library and our openness, right? There is no better platform for government to invest so that some of the key issues of the day that you're very, uh, you're very concerned with can be talked about. And some of the things that you think perhaps citizens are very worried of, are worried about and they're even fearful of, uh, they could also be the first, the library can be the first place where you can encounter them because the library is about expansion. So it's about expanding each citizen's ability to embrace more opportunities and also more perspectives. Uh, so I pitched the idea of the platform to, to the two of them and they were very supportive. So the finance person said, Jean, do the experiment. When you do the experiment, come in with partners, do a proof of concept, and this is the sort of thing that we'll support. If you can do that, you can think outside just what libraries want to do, but also to help 
other sectors to come together into a powerful national concept, then I will support you. So in a way, Ilona, when you ask me why not somewhere else, I'm saying somewhere else. It's just somewhere else and the library can become partners in this. But I want to put, and this is my, my, my dream, I want to put the libraries uh, at the main table, not at the kids' table, to be at the main table so that eventually we grow enough of this traffic, enough of these uh, partnerships, we become a big player. We become a player in the country. And people will look to us and say, okay, we're going to go to the library, we're going to partner the library, we're going to deliver this service to citizens, we're going to deliver this national service. Uh, so I'm trying to sort of mix up two questions in one. Okay, so that's my first answer. Okay, now I like a spoken question. I'm ignoring well, the why don't, why don't we go down then? Why don't we do um, Philippa and then Stephen and then Marie and then we can go back to you. Yay. Okay, so we do. Philippa, can you articulate your question? Can you hear me? And say, yes, say, who, say where you are, Philippa. I'm in Lisbon and I'm in bit in the space because I'm so excited with, the, with this presentation. Uh, so I'm based in Lisbon, but my mind is already blown away <laughs> elsewhere. So um, yeah, I was wondering, especially when you uh, talked about the, the T-shaped uh, discovery, I don't know if I understood it uh, very well, but it made me think, uh, I'm curious about uh, how do you um, manage this this, um, this process between uh, something that uh, happens um, with an algorithm and make it go, make it generate um, what you want to generate, which is uh, which is uh, enrichment experience, and also if this experience has to do um, with uh, with books and um, in digital uh, with catalog of, of the of the library. Is that it or with the superstar that you mentioned? Yeah, so the idea is uh, so the idea is a superstar. Philippa, thank you for your question. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm so happy I'm talking to someone. Yeah, I'd like to talk to at least 10 people today. Yeah, and not through the chat. Yeah, so so I, 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 love, I, I love what I just said. So the first thing is, this is not just about what's in the library. It's the library plus plus. So it's whatever the library has as well as content that we'll pull in. Uh, and what we hope to do is that when a person chances upon something, like say they go see a theatre show, Philippa, so they see a theatre show, they go watch, for instance, uh, uh, The Book of Mormons or something. So you watch The Book of Mormons, so you come in, uh, you say, okay, let me, let me have a look at The Book of Mormons and see what I can do the Learning Superstore. So when you're flipping the program for Book of Mormons, there is a Learning Superstore tag there that links to the library. When you, when you access that, what you'll see is not just information about the director, Book of Mormons and all that. You will also be able to access, for instance, uh, all the different perspectives about religion. You could also understand a little bit more about missionary evangelism that goes to uh, perhaps uh, uh, to Africa or some of these countries. Uh, you could also talk about the whole idea of creativity, the whole idea of expression. Yeah, so there's a whole range of things that go into, and these can be different formats. It could be something else for another theatre show. It could be a book from the library. It could be a librarian's curated Spotify list on the five things you can read in relation to the Book of Mormons. It could even be about just the Mormons. So those are, those are the ideas. Uh, we're working now with a cocktail. So one idea is that while the algorithm is interesting enough to be able to use user history, we're also interested to, uh, to recommend certain things to people. Uh, so what we could do is that um, when you look at something like that, uh, we could also create a package that captures, say, 20 perspectives on this idea. So when you knock on it, and I'm going to tell the title is, try not to take the title for your projects, okay? I've not trademarked it, okay? Please don't. It's called Read to be Sure. Read to be Sure. Okay, so now Read to be Sure package uh, that could be like 20 perspectives on the topic. So you could chance upon something like that. And that is something that is uh, linked to the data of this particular, this particular item. And that helps you to generate that. How we create these 20 perspectives, we are planning to work with the community to create these. Uh, we're thinking of working with our newspaper house and our team of journalists to also create this. So again, working in partnership uh, so that the community is also involved in all these products that help you to just 
break open the perspectives. Uh, so it's not just algorithms that go, we are working with a cocktail, it's algorithms with some, uh, with some curated intervention, as well as using the content tagging to pull it together. Yeah. 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 Philippa, I'm trying to say it really quickly, but uh, that's one of the experiments we are working with our learning superstore. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next, next, next question, question to be spoken, to be asked. Even. Hi, so I, I apologize. I obviously made a, a typo when I was putting in my question in the first place. I guess, and, uh, I think partly my question was taken by, was, was what Ilona was saying at almost the same time about um, to what extent this is a library thing as opposed to something carried out by the sorts of activities carried out by museums. But almost as I'm talking, it sounds like there's a fantastically strong educational aspect to this and that you're really there's really an, an interesting opportunity to move libraries even more into the informal non-formal learning space in terms of providing some really exciting new forms of pedagogy forms of, of, of providing access to information to people so I, I guess the question in practical terms is to what extent linking to Alona's question are you you're are you sort of setting yourself apart from organizations like museums and other cultural spaces? And secondly, to what extent are you linking up with education, linking up with non-purely culture bits of government in order to, 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 to justify this work, in order to get support for this work? Yeah, so let's take the museum question. Um, one of the principles for me anyway, Stephen, for, for the Lab 25 experimentation is that it's not a zero-sum game. Uh, it's not museum or us. So the thinking of working in the museums is like that. So museum has their own flagship and that's us. So in the museum itself, I say in our gallery, which is our portrait gallery, I would like to have our chips in the portrait gallery so that you can access the material in the gallery. But at the same time, we are already working in museums to put their materials into our learning superstore and to be exposed. And they already agreed to that. Uh, so the museum materials are in a uh, uh, search within our system, but right now it's a bit hard to find. Uh, so there's a mutually, uh, it's a mutually expansive sort of uh, relationship. Uh, the creations that we are developing, Stephen, in the library, there's one aspect that's extremely critical. There will always be the T-shaped concept in whatever that we put in, and the T-shaped concept will always link to content. So it's not just entertainment for its own sake. So it's not just watching Harry Potter and the Cursed Child or Wicked and then going home and singing Defying Gravity. So it's not just that. Uh, everything leads to the T-shape. So even in all those wonderful things that we were talking about in the Chanel-ish superstore, every item that you pick up is almost like a, it's almost like your entry point, your nano note, your Intel chip to access a T-shape experience and hopefully you can go wide and you can go deep and the journey continues. And some of it actually continues uh, in the physical library, which uh, Ilona, I had no time to talk about. Uh, at, and I've actually not shared that with anyone yet. So that's something I'm still figuring out. Uh, the reinvention actually of the physical library to be an omni-channel sort of equivalent to the digital world. Yeah, to be almost mirrors of each other. At some point when I'm ready, I will share this with our colleagues, but I'm still figuring out how to reinvent the physical library. Yeah, but Stephen, uh, so it's a non-zero-sum game, but that is that is the thing. Everything leads to a T-shape. Yeah, and the T-shape leads to content and resources. Yeah. Um, can I just ask a data question? Um, yes. Nas National Library, 5 million citizens in Singapore. How many branches do you have? And do you have a sense of what the usage of the library is? Uh, we have 20, uh, we have 25 public libraries, mm -hmm. uh, one national archives, one national library, so about 27 physical outlets. Right. Let me give you a very interesting uh, COVID pandemic statistic. Uh, so our libraries were closed for some time, and because they were closed, so people were not able to access the physical materials. Uh, so we had a large number of people become converts to digital loans. So recently, recently the libraries opened. So that was, uh, we gradually opened and we started to notice a trend. So when the libraries opened, our statistics from January to March this year, 
when compared to the pre-COVID world, because our libraries only started closing in April 2020. Okay, so mark that date, April 2020. So we look at our statistics from January to March. So April is when the library closed. So we will say comparing January to March 2021 to January to March 2020, which is technically the period before COVID and library closure, it was an interesting statistic. The digital loans that had expanded quite phenomenally, Ilona, during the, during the COVID period, when libraries were closed and when they started opening very gradually restrictions, it maintained its high. Mm -hmm. So people continue to borrow digitally. So it's reached a new high. It's, it's mm -hmm. above the pre-COVID era. Mm -hmm. The shocking thing was the fiscal loans after the libraries opened outstrip our figures pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So what that actually means, Ilona, is that uh, the hunger for digital is there, it's a new habit, uh, but the physical borrowing increased as well. So in a very strange way, the pie actually got bigger. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about from uh, April 2021 to now? You've seen an uptick in physical January rent. to March or 2021. But unfortunately, Lona, right. Right. our libraries had to close again because we had a little outbreak. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the physical loans could go back down again. Oh, of course, things uh, look like a kind of standard there. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but it's and, an interesting. And just in terms of, of usage, um, you know, is it a high usage in Singapore? Is it a library heavy? You know, what's your competition? Uh, very, very heavy. So basically we have, in a, in a normal year, I think uh, 27 branches and all that, about 30, mm -hmm. 30 million mm -hmm. visitors, okay. 30 billion visitors. So uh, one of the most, I would say one of the most visited and popular places. And as I said, digital access is about 85 million. Mm -hmm. So the, the numbers are high enough for me to pitch the idea of us mm -hmm. being the um, public good Amazon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, interesting. That, I might yeah. come back to you on some of that. Um, so now we're going to jump to Marie. Um, this question about engaging people and co-develop and not be spectators, and that kind of links into the next question from Elizabeth as well around, you know, how how are people asking for stuff versus being offered stuff when some people are not empowered to ask for stuff? But I'm going to give the floor to Marie, who you know well, and you can hear her lovely voice. Hi, Jean. So Hi, good Marie. to see you. How are you? Oh, very good well. Thank you. you. Um, Jean, uh, oh, first of all, I just want to thank you for doing this. It's always uh, so inspiring to hear what you're doing. And one of the things, and I, I, and I had the same experience now while you're talking, is that I know that every time I hear you or I hear experiences from Singapore, it will it will mess up my brain because yeah. you guys are doing. And it, well, it's a good thing at the end, but you guys are doing stuff that probably, um, so in general, we could not just take one, this idea and then bring it into our, because of uh, privacy issues, as the donor was talking about, or uh, because of the, uh, the mix between commercial and libraries is more, is different here. But what I always find is that if I can put myself outside of that, the ideas that you're talking about are always something that's worth stealing. And one of the things that made me think when you were talking about the Netflix um, model is that it very much uh, reminds me of what we call our mashup model. That where we, we talk about the library as this big mashup of different kinds of services. So even though we can't do it with a lot of different commercial uh, services, we can all do it with um, non-commercial partners coming in doing services for the library being in the digital world or in the physical world which is what we're trying to develop so so always worth it so what i was really curious about gene is these amazing ideas that you are now building and and i know they said these are experiments and it's some of it is in the sandbox how are you planning or are you planning because maybe you're not but how are you planning to make them um something that engages people or are you planning some sort of a co-creation process? I know that you've been working in Singapore also with design thinking, uh, but perhaps this is a different approach to looking at. And where are you planning to prototype it or test it out um, when you're moving forward? Yeah, so we're starting in-house, Marie. I'll be honest with you. We're not 
we're not as yet going out to the community to co-create. Uh, I'm actually taking a stand. I know it's, I think I've shared with you. So some of these are not the most popular things to say now, uh, but I have to say I'm taking a very tight grip on the creation process. Yeah, so at this moment, uh, we're developing this in-house in with our in-house talent, uh, and we are doing it in a sandbox process. It's a very unusual process because um, usually the CEO or the assistant CEO, uh, in most organizations, they don't get involved at the product, at the product development level. Usually, it's a, I'm not sure about you guys. Usually, it's a, it's a sort of submission process. People develop things, and then they show you, and then you see whether it's nice or not. Uh, we have created a process where the CEO and myself, every week, we run about uh, five or six sessions. And we are on the ground working with the folks. So with the different levels of staff, everyone's in the sandbox, and we are looking at the features of the product and developing it. Uh, it's a very unusual process and uh, people took some getting used to, like having the CEO in the room to figure this out. Uh, so at the moment, I'm keeping this in-house, uh, but as we develop some of these and we work with some of the industry partners and some of them are testing this out, uh, we will start to bring them in. But at the moment, we, I'm starting with conceptualizing and almost like crystallizing the idea internally first and holding a very tight grip before I go to industry because I... I I think it's very important that we have to know what we want. Yeah, so we're starting from there. So no focus groups at this moment, no focus group, no consultations yet. We are developing the product uh, and all these features in-house first. Can I, can I just then follow up? Because I, I, I totally understand what you're saying, um, but I'm thinking at some point, even if when, once you are done testing or done uh, developing, it will you will bring it out into the world. And so th this amazing idea you have of this, um, you were showing this, uh, the last piece, which can be in a mix between museum, library, learning space, all at the same time. How would you then, how are you thinking about make, um, involving users in the experience and co-creating when it's there so that they don't just become spectators in the library? Yeah. So, um, so once we go out with this, uh, what we hope to do is that uh, we will help them to develop solutions to solve problems. So I, there's a series that we are planning that's not outside this. Uh, we call it um, experiencing it, getting it, and making it. Uh, so the idea is just it, IT. Yeah, it's all about it. So having an experience in the library, but then to the experience to guide them from the base the most basic level of understanding all the way through to uh, creating something and giving back to the community. Uh, so some of these could be them uh, doing communities of people. They can support communities of others who are equally fearful or some of these things. Uh, and then some of these could actually be the curated list that we talked about. Uh, there's an intersection in the physical library that I'm working on now, uh, which is between the library and the community it comes together. Uh, and one of the ideas uh, that we're working on, Marie, is called the library takeover. And it's possible because of the digital approach. Uh, so what we hope to do is to work with the community and for them to come in, uh, to bring in their, their constituents, right? To actually take over the library like you'll take over our Instagram. Uh, but this can be done in a digital form. Yeah, so in, uh, you could have like, 100 books or 200 items or resources or inspirations. There's by a community that's working very hard on, uh, on, on different kinds of foods. Yeah, so they could create that. And that becomes almost like the library of the day. It's almost like a digital sort of Instagram takeover. Uh, so those are some of the ideas that are working with. So they can't take over the whole learning superstore, but what we hope is that they can take a concession. So some days it could be Gucci, some days it could be uh, a community that takes over a section of the Harrods Superstore and we let them take over, we put them up front and they become like the, the dominant brand of the day in the Learning Superstore. So uh, that's an example of how we will do that, uh, but it's to create opportunities for them to take over. Awesome. <laughs> I, I'm sure I got some water, very thirsty. Do you want to take a break and go and get some? Okay, I'm just gonna run out to the kitchen to get some water, is that all right?
Go, 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 go. Okay, okay, I'm just going to run very fast. Two minutes. Do it. Uh, while we're waiting, um, uh, I was just going to say that we're also thinking a lot about what we're going to do for next week's session and thinking about how we can revisit some of the topics that we discussed earlier in the year around how we operationalize the citizen engagement and democracy work that we're doing. So I'll come back to that again at the end of the session. Um, but that's, that's where I want to take this conversation that we're going after we've had these two sessions and to pick up what we've done earlier in the year. Welcome back. Are you hydrated slightly? Yes, I am. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Isotonic drinks, I'm, I'm fine. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm always like kind of going down the, you know, I'm a good girl, operational delivery person. I, was, I, lo I, I think I might have heard you say, hold on, we said, screw all that, let's do it differently. I'm, you know, I'm, I may, don't quote me quoting you. And I think we just all envy that freedom. And I'm, I'm just coming back to a kind of, you know, impact assessments, you know, like how, you know, you've been given money to do this. Is somebody going to say, well, how do you know it? You know, it's like, what happens if every single one of these is like a massive failure on whatever terms you put them in? Um, you know, out of 60 experiments, there's got to be some that are going to work like just on the sheer numbers, right? You know, how have you, you know, where's the freedom there? And how, who are you going to have to give account to at some point? You know, what personal and institutional risks are you taking? Yeah, um, so we have been given a fraction of the budget that would make this possible, about 10%. What so does that mean in money terms? Uh, 10%. Yeah, so and 10 how much is that in dollars? Um, one Singapore dollars is, uh, it's not a lot, it's 17 million. Sing 17 million Singapore dollars. Yeah, Singapore dollars, like, it's a little bit of Australian dollars. Does that help? Okay, okay I'll, I'll, somebody can Google quickly. I'm going to guess that's about 10 million US, maybe less. 10 million, no more than that. So it's about 10 million euros, I think. Okay. okay. Yeah, 10 million euros. So it's not a lot, but it's enough for us to carry out some experiments. Uh, so I had to tell you, Ilona. That's, I think that's that a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Is that a lot, folks? Do you want 10 million euros to play with? That's a huge, and that's that just 10%. Gee, like you're blowing our minds. Mind blowing amount of money. Okay, sorry, carry on. We're all scraping ourselves off the floor in jealousy now. No, no, don't say that, don't say that. Because not these are expensive stuff, Marie. It's not these are huh? the buildings. Marie, it's not these are like systems building. You know, systems, they cost money. IT, right? Uh-huh. I know. Okay. It so just... it's not just fancy stuff, like, you know, like like art and all that. So it's not these... Oh, yeah. Okay, so the... I hope I got it right. Yeah, 10 million. Okay, okay. so 10 million euros. So, uh, Ilona, I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm cheating a little bit here. Okay. Um, is, it, is it a secret just for us and the no, rest? Of the no, group? it's fine. It's fine. Okay. But, uh, okay. Just, just don't send it to the Ministry of Finance. So I'm okay. cheating a little okay. bit. Uh, so besides this, um, sixty experiments, we are putting some of these into things that are, I would say, surefire hits. Okay. And some of them veer a little bit more to uh, guaranteed business. Excellent. So it's a little oh. bit like um, stocks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's yeah, a mix of high risk, high. low risk. Yes, sure. So bet, be, yeah. If you be clever about it, yeah. there are some things that are bound to get you numbers. Great. And, and it, okay, okay, numbers is so numbers is one thing that you need to hear. Okay. So yeah. there are some cash cows that we continue to do a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, but we know it doesn't, it does it may not take so much effort and all that, they will get us the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in a way, it's not killing all our business uh, and then just focusing on these 60. But using what we're very strong at to support the 60 to go on. Mm. Yeah. So that that I think is quite important to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Ilona, I'm cheating a little bit. It's literally like like stocks. You have mm -hmm. to put a mixture of stocks in mm -hmm. terms of how you look at the libraries. I do that with my advocacy goals. You know, I have like one or two that are just so low-hanging fruit. I have two or three that are kind of ambitious, but 
achievable and I have one or two that are absolutely impossible and will never happen, but we just throw them in because you never know. And then I know that I'm going to have like a range of a range of, of hits as I go. The um, other way that yeah. we're doing it is I'm not doing it all together. So for instance, you know the Intel chips that we talked about? Yeah. So we're doing it in uh, four phases. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting with the one that is going to get me the, the numbers I need. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm cheating here. I'm starting with the easiest one. Okay. I'm going to put stuff in malls. So, so the first, the first Intel chip that I'm going to do is called doors. Uh huh. Doors, you know, opening doors. Yeah. Okay. So this Intel chip is a very straightforward, and I think it's going to be a surefire hit in terms of numbers. So we're going to put doors from October onwards, uh, in 30, 38 of our malls. The business yeah. malls and okay. every draw is a uh, entry into the library so in terms of our resources content and the learning superstore that we talked about uh-huh. uh, so every door is going to do that so that's going to get us huge numbers uh-huh. and then after that we're going to start to experiment we're going to go outdoors i'm going to put my chips outdoors uh-huh. that is a tougher experiment uh-huh. uh, and then uh, after that i'm going to go into something that we call uh invisi notes so this invisi nano notes they don't have a physical form uh, but we're trying to figure out how to uh to to have it in different parts of singapore so when you chance upon something if you have enabled permissions of course through our app uh it will tell you something about the space it'll give you something about the space mm-hmm. yeah so um progressing from something maybe a little simpler and then gradually moving on to something else that's a bit riskier mm-hmm. Um, I want you to hear a couple more voices and then I'm going to very slowly move to wrap up and let you get to bed. Uh, Katrina Esberg, uh, maybe um, you can jump in with your question. I thought that was interesting. And then Erna, you had a question as well. So I think they're quite different. So go for it, Katerina. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this really inspirational uh, talk. I was, yeah, it's mind blowing, I would say. Uh, but I'm thinking about, and it's a little bit connected to what Marie was uh, talking about, but how to involve the users and how do we get the tr- more traditional uh, library users to follow on this journey? Because there are usually some that are really, really outspoken and uh, they take a lot of uh, the room. They could do that at least. And if they see something that is really not uh, in line with what they are expecting from the library, uh, how do you convince them to follow on this uh, journey? Yeah, um, I, 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 I've been working on something called, uh, Katarina, the theory of the one third. So I'm dividing my customers into three thirds. Yes. Um, So there's a third that is going to power you on and they might actually come on board like Marie said to help you develop the stuff. So that third is going to be the winners. Uh, There's a third that's on the fence and then there's a third that might be very difficult to bring along. It's just like vaccination. There's always going to be a certain group that's going to be vaccine hesitant. So let me talk about uh, the group that's in the middle. So the group that's in the middle is uh, there are people that we need to to figure out how to clickbait them to get into this new space. Uh, so some of these things what we're doing is that in the physical library world, uh, that's why I thought about omni-channel, to put enough of these elements inside to encourage them to move over. Uh, you can't ask them to go to a digital world immediately. So one of the ways that I'm trying to get this middle third to go is to create a physical, that's why I talk about the digital, a physical digital experience for them. So something that they can almost see, they can feel, uh, but it gives you a chance to say, you know, if you just take one more step, you can access the digital world, but let me get you to access that in the physical library. Yeah. As for the last one third, uh, we will do our best to take them, move them into the middle third. But for a lot of these, I think uh, there is no shame, Katrina, to continue to service them the way that they love to be serviced. So a part of the library, is, which is one of the things, Ilona, that I'm working on, is um, to create the best traditional library in the library still. How to do that? So one of the experiments is uh, uh, can we create the, the most beautiful 
reading space in Singapore in the library. Uh, so we call it the idea of case and comments. So there are some people who like the comments. So remember the square and the tower, you know, go out, do all kinds of things in the library. Uh, but we have to create case. And I'm determined, Katerina, it's not a cop-out because I believe in that myself, to continue to service those customers the way exactly they like to be serviced. I'm not going to move them to do something else that they would never want to do, but I'm going to try my best to create uh, a service in the library that is a better, even better version or addition of what they are used to. Yeah. So it might make the library a little bit schizophrenic, but I'm okay with that. I think it's okay for the library to serve different customers. They don't all have to be digital. They don't all have to use the superstore. Uh, but where they are, I want to make sure that they're comfortable. So that's why I said it's not a... Ilona, the, the principle I'm working with is not a zero-sum game. Mm. It is not one or the other, but it's almost like a continuum. It's case, it's commons, and it's everything that's in yeah. between. Yeah. I think, I think that's one of the most important lessons for us often is, well, I think balancing risk is, is a complex question, but the zero-sum game, you know, when, when you open your mind and your heart, there's space for everything. And, and you know... On the other hand, you know, the, the kind of resources and energy and support, this is something we talk about a lot, you know, sometimes it is about money. Sometimes it's just about uh, general capacity or energy or a sense of feeling that we're not alone or that there's ways in which we can do things differently. And I think that's, that's something that we all need to feel supported and encouraged in. I'm going to hand to Erna, and then unless every, anybody's absolutely burning to ask something, I'm going to start wrapping up slowly. Erna? Yeah, thank you. I think part of my question uh, you partially answered uh, just on the question of Katarina, but um, maybe you could elaborate, elaborate some more. I'm curious about what the experiences are and how to insert the digital and the physical uh, library service into a hybrid approach and whether the expectations are met in the same way in the digital library as in the physical library. Well, you just said that you want to create a more, even better experience in the physical library, the best reading room ever. And I wonder if the teams that are involved with the digital library I have discussions with the team that's uh, involved in the physical library and how uh, uh, if they have certain discussions discussions on the service level that uh, that you want to achieve. Uh, and I wonder, do you expect users in the post-COVID time to hop from digital to physical and back? Or do you expect them to just cling on to what they were using before uh, COVID? Um, and another question, do you think, or is there a difference between the ages or the type of service that are used? So if people from a certain age, do they use one? Uh, well, you already talked about the older people or uh, the more conventional library users. They, do they stick there or do you expect them to um, uh, step into the digital world and the uh, digital users? who haven't been using the physical library, do you expect them, because you made them curious about what the library can offer, to maybe even enter the, uh, the physical library? Well, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> yes, that's, Ilona, that's more questions than all the other yeah, questions yeah, I, that came I'm before. Sorry, that's like five I, questions. I'm a, I'm a greedy child. Right? <laughs> you, you're allowed I, to just answer the one you want to. No, it's fine. So I'll do, as, I'll do my best because there are a lot of questions. I'll do, I'll do my best, okay? So I'll, maybe I'll talk about the patterns in the library. And this is maybe a sharing from my part of the world on uh, like library user patterns. Uh, so there's one thing that we've noticed, and that is that uh, the highest usage of our library, the highest usage of our library, both uh, physical as well as digital, uh, actually families with children below 12 years old. Yeah, so both the children below 12 years old, as well as um, the parents of the children. Uh, so you get it, huh? So that whole idea of the family, the parents, the children below 12 years old, and the children below 12 years old. That is our biggest, uh, our biggest group. 
the second biggest group will be our teenagers, surprisingly. The group that we're finding extremely difficult to get now are adults who do not have children or who have older children. Uh, so these are younger adults who so like in their 20s, 30s, and those who are, who are older, but their children have grown up. They have children, but they've grown up. Yeah. So, um, so you might you might think that a lot of the things Ilona they were doing is sort of geared towards um, adults and the, and a crowd that is actually very uh, very millennial. But that's because that's the group that is the toughest to crack. Yeah. So the the users that mentioned earlier. So those are the those are families. They continue to come, and they are our biggest our biggest group. Uh, so our issue now is the group that is young, that's millennial, uh, Generation Z, they started to use the digital, which means uh, in the past, they may not even use the library as much. But because of COVID, they have established a habit of using us digitally. So now that they've used us digitally, uh, we would like them to come down to our physical outlet and then to see what is there that could surprise them. Uh, but if they were to come down, the libraries are still more traditional, then it may not it may not hook them. So the idea is that can the fiscal library, as I mentioned to Marie earlier, uh, that could even be a takeover. So for instance, you could get someone uh, who is very, um, who is very uh, in line with the interests of this group to do a takeover of the library. So it's a physical library takeover, not an Instagram takeover, and that could actually draw them in. Uh, so that is a, so, so, so that is a, that's a riddle that we are still trying to crack. Yeah. But from my previous experience at the Prime Minister's office when I did the Bicentennial, the museums have the same problem. They find it very hard to get this group. Uh, but that project actually broke all attendance records in Singapore. Uh, the people who are of that age group who normally don't like to come to history stuff, they came in droves and they were the ones who actually brought their friends, their parents to come to, to the show. So I'm trying to recreate the experience of the Moscow uh, the must see within the library. So that's one. Uh, oh, Marie has to run for a train. Bye, Marie. <laughs> Bye. Okay, and then the other one is, um, yes, the, the physical users and the digital, uh, the, the traditional users. I think as I mentioned before, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do that in the physical library. So for them to get to digital, I want the projects that we're working on is to come up with the idea of place history in the library. So we're putting our entire uh, place history collection, but in the form of a geographical form in the library. So it's not new libraries that are doing next year. Yeah, so the, the shelving of materials and all that physical materials will be actually placed according to almost like a miniature of Singapore. Yeah, so it's related to that. But once again, to this very traditional looking exhibit, right, of physical Singapore with the books and all that, uh, then we will start to show them ways in which they can access even more content and videos in the library. So the good thing, I don't know about the rest of the world, but in Singapore, you have to scan a code to enter a building or to enter a shop. It's part of our contact tracing program. Uh, so even people who are not used to doing it, you might call them, Katrina, you might call them traditional users. They are now sensitized to the idea of using that. So we're going to make use of that so that we are they, in our physical facility, they will access our digital materials. So that's in a little bit of a hybrid approach. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I'm not going to hold you to this, but at the beginning, Jean, I'm okay. You said, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> you said um, if anybody wanted to borrow any of these ideas, maybe use them in a different name. Um, there's like librarians from all over Europe here. Um, can they, uh, is there a way that they can get in touch with you or is there, you know, can we, can we take inspiration from this? If somebody's heard something that they want to try in their own library, is that, is there something that's available that they could have a look at or, you know, how, how could we, how can we steal them all? You can, but Ilona, it's not, it's not anywhere. I'm so sorry. It literally, when? when? You can see that a lot of my slides, they change from uh, session to session. because Excellent. I You're really inventing I, as you go. I, I, yes, I'm, I'm moving them along as I go along. Um, 
I, I'm very sorry. I would love to share. I really don't have anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tell you what. On the internet. Yeah, I'm so we, sorry. Can we invite you back next year to hear which ones you did and how how you've, which ones you think were the absolute winners and uh, promise to share at least one spectacular failure with us as well. There'll be so many. And I, I had an offer to everyone here. I mean, you're all my colleagues in the library world. Uh, if you ever want to talk to me, one-to-one -one chat, and then you want me to uh, talk through some ideas with you, or even if there's something that you want to share with me, and then we could talk about it, and together we can figure it out, I'm happy to do that. So maybe that's a better offer than that saying I don't have anything on record. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah? Very, that's, very what, that's what the library world is about. We create things together. Right. And if one right. of you succeeds before we do, I will be so happy. <laughs> that is the kindest most generous thing and that's absolutely the spirit in which we're trying to build this network you know the way we do crazy things where we feel comfortable in saying screw this let's do it differently let's take some risks let's be allowed to fail and let's um support and inspire each other as we go um, I think we need to let you go. I want to thank you so much for your time. I want to thank all of you for your questions. It's been lovely seeing all of your faces here. And I hope many of you can join us for next week so that we can think about what we're going to do together over the next year. Um, I wish you a great night, Jean, and I wish everybody across uh, slowly vaccinating and opening up Europe a very peaceful and joyful evening. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, bye. everyone. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Jean. Bye bye. Bye.